Ever wondered how stolen credit card details end up on the dark web? This is carding, one of the most widespread cyber crimes. It is not just hackers behind the scenes, it's a global black market worth billions and yes, it affects you more than you think. Let's try to decode carding, what it is, how it works and how to protect yourself. So first of all, let us talk about what is carding. Carding is the unauthorized use of someone else's credit or debit card details to buy goods or services typically online. I want to listen I want you to listen to this again carding is the unauthorized use of someone else credit or debit card details to buy goods or services which are typically online talk about carding it's not just one hacker with your card it is an whole ecosystem from phishing to data breaches to atms with skimmers card details are stolen sold in bulk and used globally i have added a fact here uh, you can read it. 10% of the Indian dark web activities is equals to carding. It means uh, if there are 100 dark web attacks, 10 of them will be carded. And it is this much organized that you will get, you will easily get 100 card sets with the with $500. So now uh, we just got to know about what carding is. Like it is the use of uh, someone else cards details to buy things. And now let us talk about how carding actually works. I have added this in a brief. I'll talk about this now. First of all, the first point is data theft. Attackers steal card info via phishing, malware, skimmers, or breaches. Now they have your card details. Now the second point which I've written is dark web sale. Like a uh, card number, CVV, your address, your phone numbers are sold on dark web forums later on. Then there will be some checking tools. Criminals use automated checking checkers to see if the cards are still active or not. We'll talk about it later again, how they will check about this, where we'll be talking about the tools. Next thing, uh, now they, they, they got to know which cards are active. Now the second step is they will purchase and resell things. Valid card details are used to buy goods, often gift cards or electronics and then resold. The last point I have written is laundering. The goods are converted into cash or crypto to erase the trail. Now, uh, if you are not familiar with this word laundering, laundering in the context of cybercrime means cleaning dirty money or goods. All of this can be happen in minutes without the card holders even knowing to know, knowing about it. So now we are familiar about what carding is, how this carding works. Now, uh, as I said, we'll talk about the tools and techniques which will be used. So the carders use a variety of tools to say ahead. First of all, bin attackers. These bin attackers are used to generate valid card combination combinations. So there are some tools which will generate combinations, uh, combination of numbers or something which will look exactly like these cards. So these things are also possible. Second, there are checker bots to test the thousands of cards quickly. So you will give it a list of thousand cards. It will check automatically in a few seconds like if these cards are active or not. Proxies and VPNs, which are very famous in this dark web. Proxies and VPNs are used to hide identities and their locations. So last thing, fake e-commerce sites to validate stolen cards under the radar. Now is using your credit card details. Sometimes it is possible you will get a notification from your bank like your card details are used. So in this case, it can be harmful for the hacker. So what they do, the website means the hacker creates a fake online store like a normal e-commerce site. But instead of selling real products, they use it to enter the stolen card info. Try small test payments like one rupee or one dollar. See if the card works without alerting banks. One more fact, there are some telegram groups which offer subscriptions for fresh stolen cards. Yes, it is that much organized, this starting market. Now we'll talk about the impacts and statistics. If we'll talk about in 2024 alone, India recorded cyber fraud losses over 11,000 crores. Bank transaction frauds jumped from 75,800 to nearly 3 lakh cases in a year. I got this uh, numbers and figures from internet. High valued frauds of over 1 lakh surged by 4 times and more than 7.4 lakh complaints are filed in this just few months. Victims include not just individuals but banks, e-commerce platforms and payment gateways. The cost isn't just financial, it's about the trust, reputation and security which can be lost easily. Now, uh, we got to know about how carding is, what carding is, how it works, what are the tools, how it affected the Indian markets. And now let's talk about the prevention of this. You can't stop hackers, but you can protect yourself, right? Use virtual or prepaid cards for online purchases. Never share your OTPs for personal banking info. Monitor your bank statements and enable real-time alerts. Uh, as I said, they will do these checkings while doing some payments on their own websites of $1 or one rupee to check if they are getting 
real time alerts or not if so it is difficult for them to manage businesses invest in fraud detection and data security tools nowadays there are a lot of tools there are security services which should be adopted by businesses so now uh, as we are in the end of this video uh, i just want to say carding is no longer a safe time small time cyber crime it's a digital epidemic the best defense is awareness stay alert and stay secure now still if you have any questions on this and if you like these small videos on my channel you can drop your comment you can drop your what you are thinking on this comment box and still if you want something you have some doubts you can drop me a mail